So as I promised, here is the video about cognitive distortions. And these are the things that we have to watch out that we say to ourselves that we actually really believe. And then we create a whole story about what's going on in our lives. And the internal fight or battle is, can you get out of that distortion and reframe and see things a different way? Because the only way you're going to get into a positive action is if you have some positive self-talk going on. So here's a few distortions I want you to consider. Okay, so number one is catastrophizing. So sometimes instead of thinking about something in a way that we can handle it, like breaking it down, like let's say you have to move out of your house, right? And you're going through a divorce, you have to move out of your house. Instead of thinking, about it in terms of I'm never going to find another house. I'm never going to have another home that that is catastrophizing. So it's really tough to, to actually do that action because the fear is so huge. So catastrophizing, watch out for that one. So the other one is discounting the positive. And I was thinking about this myself when I recently went on a vacation and there was a bunch of stuff that didn't go well. And I kept reminding myself that that wasn't the only part of the vacation. Yes, normalizing it. Things go bad on vacation too, just like things go wrong in, in regular life, flat tires, get sick, um, all that kind of stuff. And But part of it is not continuing to focus only on the negative things that happen. That is key. Using only emotional reasoning. So sometimes based on our mood, we might reason something to feel like it's true. Like that is the reason why something is happening versus um, logic and rationale. So um, what's a good example of that emotional reasoning? Um, I'm not invited to that party because those people don't like me versus they always think I'm out of town. So they're not going to invite me because they don't think I'm home. So it might be something that's more rational um, and watch how you, how that happens because the, one of the other emotional, dis, I mean, cognitive distortions is jumping to conclusions, like creating the negative conclusion as reality looking at, am I jumping to conclusion just because I'm insecure or anxious and I just like want to know. So I'm going to give myself a conclusion that makes me feel really bad instead of the very important coping mechanism is reframing. So reframing is I could think about that a different way and it doesn't have to be something bad about me or something that's going to make me feel bad about myself. And I'm not talking about um, giving yourself excuses about not doing stuff. I'm not talking about that because there, we could have a tendency and we need to watch our tendency of excusing yourself from things that are your commitments. So another one is mental filtering. So that might mean having that negative lens where you start looking at things through that negative lens and that's what your filter. It's not like the the positive stuff is filtered out. And I always think about um, there's a way to do a life review, right? To think about how you've lived your life in certain parts of your life, like social relationships, career, um, whatever you've done for a period of time and sort of reviewing how you've done it. And sometimes that review could be a, a negative review on your life. So watch the mental filtering. The other is one of my favorite ones, which is mind reading. I see so many people in long-term relationships doing mind reading with their partners instead of checking things out. So that vibing like, oh, that person's in a bad mood or that person's mad at me instead of actually something bothering you, asking a, a validating question. So watch the mind reading. We can make stuff up. Another cognitive distortion is fortune reading, like as if we know what the future is going to bring instead of being really open to the possibilities of the future or of um, maybe things will go well. So that fortune reading and making that fortune reading something that's not so favorable for you or fantasizing about something that might not 
be true. And that way you're going to get ultra disappointed. Another is overgeneralizing. So overgeneralizing is just um, what kind of putting everything into a category that um, that isn't really being specific and not really relatable to your life. Everything always goes wrong. I never have enough money. Um, nothing ever works out for me. So that kind of negative thinking, personalizing that all the things that happen in life are personal to you. And maybe some of the things, and it's always really interesting to note that some of the things that happen in life are normal things that happen. Um, like when there's a divorce, it's it's normal that people want to take sides. It's normal that you would feel depressed. It's normal that you would be going through a transition and lots of changes. So really understanding that sometimes things aren't just so directed to yourself because of your situation, but they're normal things that occur. And then good old should statements and good old should statements like I should do this, I should do that, just make us feel like we're failing. So when you're listening to me talk about cognitive distortions, I wonder if you can go back and think about the ones that you tend to do and try to keep them at the top of your mind just for a few days and, and notice and catch yourself doing cognitive distortions to see if you can take some time to reframe your thinking and do things in a different way so that you have the chance and the opportunity to actually be more flexible with yourself and more positive and build that relationship of confidence 